you ever get that feeling like you're you're misunderstood like you are just you're the one who's doing the extra <laughs> you're always on some extra credit shit right like you at like you feel like you're doing a lot of things but at the end of the day you you kind of question yourself like man am i just spinning my wheels or you feel kind of out of place like maybe within your circle you try and talk about the things that you're passionate about but no one truly understands you like like even if like your closest person like your better half your spouse your girlfriend your boyfriend whatever um your family right your parents those who you really care about you see what i've learned is that it just kind of by observing and also experiencing myself is that our our biggest roadblock is actually placed by ourselves it's not placed by anything anything that's external meaning it's not it's not the lack of influence we have in our circle because now we got the resources where we could go find that influence we can go find a, a channel like at sales remastered to give us the insight give us the you know the tips and and the tricks to develop the right mindset right we could find um, the information that we need through a search bar right today like whatever you need like you could literally google it and you'll you'll find access to it now now granted there's a plethora of information so you got to be careful in, in in information that you accept is true but at the end of the day like we have so many so much opportunity that we sometimes feel this anxiety right like man am i am i doing the right thing am i am i wasting my time am i doing extra am i being judged are people thinking i'm weird right like sometimes we just we become our biggest roadblock and we are actually the ones that are stopping ourselves because we have this misperception that 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 we don't want to be perceived as the one who does so much and then ends up failing and ends up looking dumb and so you know if that's you like right now like if you know it's you because when you talk about that one thing, whatever that one thing is, that one thing is what lights you on fire. That one thing is what makes your heart beat faster. That one thing is what makes you smile. And you could, I mean, you can go from an introvert to an extrovert, right? Like you just naturally like, man, I got topic for day. I could talk about this for days, right? Like that's that one thing. And a lot of times that one thing is, is something that you appreciate more than those around you, those within your circle, those that care most about you. And so if this is a challenge that you're going through, like you just kind of feel misunderstood or you kind of feel doubted or unappreciated um, or you just feel kind of uh, like people are just not aware of, of what you have to bring. Meaning that you're on a wavelength that no one really understands. And so when you try and share this message, people kind of you know look at you with with discredit We're almost like man that's dumb and it, it kind of hurts because that's something that you are truly passionate about so if you felt that way stick around because I'm a vent with you and, and while I vent with you right I'm gonna share with you what I've learned through my climb and why you should not let this ruin your day ruin your momentum but more importantly you should not let it allow you to be a roadblock in your own way. Let me show you everything I know. Jungle What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, and I'm your host. On Sales Remastered, I myself, who I've been in in a hustle environment, I've been in a sales environment, I've been in the uh, top environment where, you know, I don't work for salary, right? I don't work for my hourly wage, even though at times I may have had an hourly wage, I was not at my job for that hourly wage. I was uh, the closest thing to an, a real entrepreneur as can be, and that's meaning that I worked fully based on commission and bonuses. And it takes a certain type of mindset to survive in this atmosphere. Um, you know, this atmosphere that I'm talking about is like a salesman or an entrepreneur type atmosphere. And on this channel, what I do is I share the lessons that I've learned along my way. And I've been in sales for over two decades now. It's 20 years. 
and uh, ever since a young child up until now I'm sh I'm sharing all that I've learned in the certain uh, lessons that I've learned along the ways from different mentors that I've had and my goal is to give you a resource give you a channel that you can look to and watch to help you develop the right skills so that you survive in this atmosphere but more importantly give you the information and the content that you need to help you develop the right mindset that you need to lead those around you and maybe those that that live with you your family maybe uh, you're trying to you know bring your family to a better place you're trying to provide for your family or you're trying to establish a family or maybe you're just trying to set up your own foundation so that you can be more independent so if that sounds like you you've come to the right place and in this video we're gonna do something a little bit different than sales this time we're gonna go uh, around the topic of mindset development and as I had mentioned before you know we have this uh, this common challenge where we become our own roadblock and you know typically we could stand in our own way for various reasons right we could stand in our way because of doubt we could stand in our way because of uh, of self-doubt like uh, lack of confidence or maybe um, you know we just have this fear within us of looking like a fool and sometimes we we just kind of go with the rhythm of those around us Meaning that we blend in with with our circle, and so at times it feels like we just are misunderstood because the things that really motivate us or, or really inspire us, no one really knows about, or they're not on that wavelength. And so what we do tend to do is is fall back on our momentum and fall back on our hustle because we're more comfortable blending in. We're more comfortable blending into our circle. And so you might know that you're, you're kind of that way because maybe your circle of friends have this one, you know, trendy word, right? Or this one uh, uh, dress style, right? Like you guys might be all in fedora hats or, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's your thing. And even though you don't really like it or you don't really feel that type of style, you more or less still kind of adapt, right? And so you get a fedora hat even though you feel like a, like a fool wearing it. You know, and this is just an example. You know, I'm not saying you click or your, your, your circle wears fedora hats. It could be anything. It could be Gucci shirts or Gucci flip flops, right? There's always that one thing within your circle that, that typically, you know, becomes a trend. And so one friend might have it. And next thing you know, another friend has it. And then you're like, oh, okay, cool. This is what we're doing. And so then you go get it. And next thing you know, all you guys are wearing it like you guys going to Sadie's and shit. But where I'm getting at is because we typically fall back and and follow sometimes it's hard for us to lead and I've been a leader and a sales a sales manager for quite some time now and I've had this this uh, this ability to get promoted very quick like um, you know whenever you're in a sales environment and if you're good at sales usually what happens is they try they try to turn you into a manager so that you can create more of you and uh, and so ever since a young age of you know my early 20s I was getting promoted very quick because I was just very good at selling and um, and so they would turn me into a manager but I had this difficult time in adapting to being a manager because it was hard for me to lead and the reason why it was hard for me to lead was because I could it was hard for me to accept that the people that I was leading or the people that I was working with were not as motivated or they didn't want it as bad as I wanted it you know like some people are just okay with the nine to five some people are just okay with the base some people are just okay with the hourly right they, they don't necessarily need to uh, or want to make as much income as they can where I was on the wavelength where I wanted to make as much as I can right like they're okay with uh, you know swap me brands me I was trying to go to Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom's right I wanted that those finer things and so one of the hardest challenges for me was just basically accepting that people are, are lazy they're just not on you know that wavelength and so it took a lot of trial and error you know I became manager you know then got demoted became a manager maybe left the spot because it was that inner grind and the reason why I bring this up is because it's very similar like if you are a manager right now you could probably you probably agree that's very similar to having you know just a batch of friends right like your team is are, are your group of friends and so, sometimes you're gonna have clicks within your group of friends of the individuals who just don't care who are rebellious and they don't want to follow code 
and then you're gonna have another group of people who are all about the code, who are all about the hustle, who are all about the message, they're on your wavelength. And and when you try and convince those who are not on that wavelength, they kind of look at you weird, like you're talking some foreign language. And this becomes very difficult to digest and, and accept because you know you may have this specific mindset that that is is wired in a different way, right? It's kind of like you know, it's it, it's just like you're on your own operating system, and other individuals have their own operating system, and your operating system is designed to run and be compatible with you, compatible with your life, compatible with your with your goals and your dreams and your visions and your aspirations, whereas other operating systems or other individuals, they're just simply not going to read your programs. They're not going to read your software and shit. It's just not going to. You know what I mean? It's just it's like Windows and, and Apple. You know, some things just work better with a Windows browser, whereas other things just work better with, uh, you know, with Safari. And so this is very much like life because when you get into a position where you become so inspired and so, so motivated to do something, what's funny about it is you just want to share it, right? You just, you just hope somebody talks about it. Um, you know, it's kind of like when, when you have this favorite uh, series on TV or Netflix or whatever and you're into it, right? And you hear somebody talk about it and you're like, ooh, and then you jump in a conversation. You could talk about it for a while because you're into it too. It's kind of like that. But in this particular example, we're talking about like our own aspirations, our own dreams, our own goals, you know, things that we want to accomplish in our lives. And so when we get to that state, it's important that you remember why you're in that state. And to keep that reason why in front of you at all times because that that state of mind, that that level of energy, that frequency that you're on is going to be challenged by those who are around you. They're going to try to pull you away from that level. They're going to try to pull you down from that level and they're going to, you know, they're going to try to influence you and, and make you believe that it's not cool to do those certain things. It's not cool to work so hard. You know, it's not cool to uh, to to go so hard, like put everything you got into one thing. They're gonna try to influence you to slow down. <laughs> They're gonna try to influence you to um, accept fate, accept you know reality, and, and accept that things just aren't meant to be. They're gonna try to tell you that, you know, sometimes you just have to be born into a situation in order to make things happen. Or they're gonna try to convince you to just wait and be patient. And one of the hardest things to do is accept that message and the reason why is because we're not built that way. Like I know, <laughs> right? Like people would tell me all the time, what's funny is that it would be people who cared about me most. It would actually be my family, it would be my spouse, it would be, you know, individuals that, that really had my best interests at heart. Like they really did care about me, they wanted to make sure that I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't fail, I didn't feel like a chump, or I didn't feel like a fool, they, they, they were just looking out. You know, like we do this naturally as humans, those that we are cool with or we, we consider as friends, you know, it's it's natural for us to say, "Oh, don't worry about it, man. You'll get it next time." Right? It's kind of a it's kind of our way to help justify someone's loss or someone's failure, and that's that's what we believe is right. Whereas it's very rare to come across someone who's going to tell you to your face, like, "Well, fucking stop moping. Go try again." You know, well, uh, the fuck you act like you, your life is done. Get back on the fucking playing field and score some points. Right, like you tell them, oh man, I had a hard time doing. So, what the fuck does that mean? That you're giving up? Get the fuck back out there and make it happen, <laughs> right? It's very rare you're gonna come across someone who's like that, unless you got like a drunk grandpa or like some Uncle Tom that, you know, what I mean, just kind of abusive and shit, and they'll just tell you like it is. And and typically it's those individuals that are just raw with it. That is like, man, that fucking kind of hurt, but man, that you know, it's right, it's true. And so because it's the norm to help justify why why other people can't get it including you they're going to they're going to tell you because their own personal view is wired that way again they have a different operating system 
And so we, on this other type of operating system that just wants to continue pushing ourselves and does not want to accept reality, we don't want to accept fate, we don't want to accept that our future is determined on anything else but us. We don't want to accept that you know people are doubting us. We like to be the underdog, right? We we actually kind of enjoy it. We operate in a different way. It's why like that's that's one of the main reasons why a lot of people who do, don't do sales is because not everyone's designed or, or or built that way to to thrive in sales. Again, people in sales are just on a different operating system than people who find more comfort in a base salary, right? Who find more comfort in the nine to five. Everything is is the same, it's in order, nothing really changes. You know what I mean? It's not it's not risky. And so they're okay with doing the same exact actions time and time and time again. They're okay with uh, with their salary being the max that they can get. And the only chance of their income going higher is if they get a second job, or if they get a bonus, or if they work overtime, but they're they're relying on, on that, but they're okay and they'll exchange kind of that financial freedom or the potential for financial freedom in exchange for security and peace of mind. Again, people are just not operating on the same operating system. And so my, my message to you, my point is, is that if you have an operating system that's different and not compatible with certain people around you, I need you to keep operating regardless of them giving you those error messages saying, ah, oh, I don't understand your program, <laughs> right? Or, or, or try to tell you that, you know, it's okay, you know, don't, don't try so hard, you'll be fine, maybe next time. And, and, and the people who typically tell you that kind of message, again, are those who care about you most. And so you're going to think that it's, it's best to listen to them. And, um, and I want to tell you that the only person you really need to listen to is your heart. And when I say, you know, your heart, it's basically, it's something that, again, that makes you feel a certain way. Like that one thing that gets your heart racing, it, it, it turns you from, you know, into, from an introvert to an extrovert, meaning it, it just, it puts this surge of adrenaline and this rush of energy within you to, to strive, right? To work a little bit harder, to be a little bit more creative, to be, you know, it just gives you a reason to smile. It makes you happy. And it, if you're on a certain wavelength or if you're on this certain, this certain rhythm or this, this, this kind of like frequency, if you will, stay on that frequency. Don't feel encouraged to drop off that level just because those around you are not hearing that, that song. They're not hearing that rhythm. They're not as motivated as you. You don't need to drop down from your from your goals. You don't need to to ease up from your hustle because you don't think it's cool. Because your group of friends um, they influence you. Hey man, fuck the world, blah blah blah. Right? You like fuck it. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like I used to, I used to be encouraged that way. I used to want to be. You know, I, I I used to think like, man, I'll be all right, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm all about these streets, bro. I'm a hustle in these streets. I'm gonna be all right as long as I got my friends around me. And and sometimes it's it's actually those friends that actually hold you down. And the hardest thing to do is leave your friends because well, they're your friends. And we have this fear, and this is where we become our own roadblock that we can't go out and find other friends. It doesn't necessarily mean you don't, you know, you unfriend <laughs> your original core. It just means you find a different level of friends. You find different wavelength of friends. And if if your friends don't want you to level up your life or level up your game or go chase your dreams, then guess what, boo boo, those are not your friends. They just want company. Misery loves company. And I hope that you find the message that I share with you today as reasons to go even harder. And the next time that you become passionate and try to explain your vision and try to share your dreams and that person you're sharing it to you kind of looks like you, you know, like you're talking a different language, like, like that. <laughs> they give you that face like they don't get it because they're not as motivated. Or they don't want something as bad as you want it. I want you to keep talking. 
And I want you to find the silver lining in that. Instead of instead of thinking like, man, how come no one understands me? How come no one gets me? Do people doubt me? Am I am I being silly of wanting these certain things? The next time you feel that way, I want you to to remind yourself of the message in this video and say, you know what, D was right, man. Sometimes people just not are on that wavelength. And all I got to do is find other people who are on that wavelength. Let me go watch a video at Sales Remaster real quick, man. This dude's on that wavelength. And that boo-boo, I am. So thank you for your time and watching this video. Question of the day, what is your example of, of you know, the topic that I, that, I, uh, that I shared with you on this video? What's, what's an example where you shared with maybe someone or something? Um, you know, can you relate, right? Like, do you, do you have an instance where you had this one, this one uh, idea or this, this, this one ambition or this one goal where people, you know, around you doubted you, but maybe you hit it? Or maybe people around you doubted you, so you didn't even, so you stopped trying. But now this video is going to inspire you to go try again and get that momentum back, so you can hit it, right? That's my question for you. What's an instance where where you have been persuaded or influenced by your circle to not be as motivated? Let me know. Leave a comment below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and sh and send this video link to someone who needs to see this because there are people in our circle that that are holding themselves back. And the last thing you want to do is hold yourself back for 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 dumbass reasons, man. For dumbass reasons, just to blend in and be cool with your circle, because that that one trend is going to fade away. And when it fades away, you could have been way ahead of them and 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 had the momentum to continue in that direction. But because you held back other people who didn't get influenced to be, you know, be cool per se, they, they are now years ahead of you. And, and you're just going to have this regret, this, this sense of, of remorse. And what, what will happen is that will turn into resentment and thus, may, you know what I mean, like cause issues with you and your, with you and your crew. So I hope that, that this message finds you before it gets there. And I hope that you found value in this video. So I'll see you on the next one. Bye. I had some dreams, said some things to you. Mm -hmm.